Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Tip Tuesday. This week I'm doing all about RV financing, some misconceptions, some common questions, some things you guys should probably look out for. And believe me, I'm no expert when it comes to financing, so I got this guy right here. This is Ryan. He's our director of financing here. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. So listen, I, I picked some stuff off the web, right. as well as some common questions that I see come across our social channel. I'm going to fire them off to you. <clears throat> you give your expert answer, and we'll just go from there. Sound good? Perfect. First one I see all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready? Is... How do rates work? Should I go secure my own loan to get my best rate? What do you tell people in that situation? Well, we have a, uh, obviously a lot of lenders and we know each specific situation and how it pertains to getting that camper at the best rate and term. So with our expertise in buying power, you're, pro you're gonna get the better rate here more than likely, but it's always good to double check this and keep, keep, it, keep it honest. Okay, so the, the if I got that right, the short answer is we've got a lot of options yeah. and we've got a lot of power with those because we do so many yeah, loans. Yeah, it's just a lot of loans and a lot of money funneling there so we get we get preferential deals and rates. But you do always have the option of going securing the loan. Certainly account. have the option to make sure that we did secure the best rate for you. Our next question, money down. Do I have to have money down and if I put money down, what does it do? Uh, so money down is typically around 10% uh, is what the lenders would like to see. It's not necessarily required depending on credit mm -hmm. and some other factors like if it's a brand new camper versus a used camper, there may be more down needed. So the, that's kind of the long answer, but around 10% and you should be good to go. So maybe plan on that when you're looking for a new RV. Okay, so that's one of the things to have in your arsenal. You know, we've talked in previous Tip Tuesdays in a lot of our v in a lot of our videos. You should know your tow capacity before you come into an RV dealership. Absolutely. You should know what you kind of plan on doing with your camper because that helps our team figure out what campers to show you. Because yes. we've got a lot of campers to lot. show you. Yeah. But you should also have an idea for your total budget as well as having some money for a down payment and kind of anticipating what that is, which you said is right around that 10%. Right mark, around right? the 10% mark. Cool. Number three, you ready? You're doing yeah. great so far. Thank you. You're not sweating yet. Woo. I got you under control. Woo. So the, the next one I hear a lot about is understanding how the terms work, like yeah. uh, length of length of loan. Mm -hmm. So the there are lenders that break it down into certain criteria, but basically... If you're if you're looking at something around ten thousand dollars, we can go like around ten years, and then at, at fifteen thousand, it goes up to one forty four or twelve years, and then over twenty five, one hundred and eighty months, uh, or uh, uh, fifteen years. We can go twenty years, but there's different criteria where maybe there's more money down or some sort of situation like that. Uh, but we can go that long. And then there are preferential rates sometimes at the shorter terms that people don't even realize where they're like, oh, you know, I, if I go 60 months and I'm at, you know, whatever percent, um, that's better than what my market or, you know, that's better than what my market money is doing. And right. I want to go ahead and use the, their money instead of my money. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of options when it comes to terms. And that's why I ask what's more important to the customer mm -hmm. uh, because their budgetary number per month might be something that's really, really important to them. And then some people, maybe not that important. Oh, well, that makes sense. So key that I tell you guys all the time, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're the buyer. And until you put pen to paper, you're in full control. Full control. Ask a lot of questions, guys. Okay, here's the next one. I see it a lot, okay? We were just talking about budgets and stuff. Right. A lot of people will say, can I get an RV if I have low credit. Now, I don't know what they mean by low credit, and I think yeah. that's kind of subjective to the person maybe a little sure. bit. You yeah. know, I could have a 800 credit score and consider myself low because I want to be an 850. Be a you, you know what I mean? So uh, talk a little bit about when someone comes in with a lower credit score. Yeah, so we, we see every type of situation credit-wise come through uh, the finance desk, and what it boils down to is ability to pay the loan back, so mm -hmm. debt to income ratio has to be in line. Even with a low credit score, that can still, uh, we can still get a deal done there. 
inherently the RV market's a higher rate or higher rates anyway, so there may be a higher rate than maybe you're used to seeing on a car or something like that if you have uh -huh. lower credit score. Um, it's definitely going to be a requirement for that 10% down we were talking about, maybe even a little bit more to coerce a lender to go ahead and finance with okay. us. That's a big part of getting a lower credit score done. Um, you know, other, Otherwise, there just may be some stipulations that you have to meet. Mm -hmm. So you want to be prepared if you, if you have a lower credit score uh, to have documentation for your income, for verification of your residency, um, those types of things. And we give our customers a list so mm -hmm. they know exactly what to bring in before we ever schedule them to close on their units so they know that they're good to go before they no sign surprises. on the dotted line. No surprises at the end. So, so something you said there, just to clarify too, because I think I understand this. I think a common <clears throat> misconception, uh, this, this one kind of came off out of the blue for me, an RV loan is a recreational loan, right? Correct. Which differs from a vehicle loan. Correct. Because I can have really bad credit and go secure a vehicle loan. Mm -hmm. Because you almost have to have a vehicle. Correct. But I can have that same credit and maybe not get approved for an RV loan because it's considered a recreational and not a necessity, right? Not, not a necessity, discretionary income. So those items are going to be scrutinized more by the underwriter than Makes a vehicle sense. because it is a luxury item and not a daily use item. Yep. Makes sense. So I got another one for you. Ready? Yeah. Do I have to have insurance to have an RV? If you're going to finance an RV, you're going to have to have insurance. Period. Done. Boom. Done. 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 Easiest Easy. question ever, right? Easy. And why wouldn't you want to have insurance? I don't understand why you wouldn't. That's I mean, that's ridiculous. terrifying. It's <laughs> terrifying. Don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. So uh, guys, you have to have insurance. If you finance with us, it's a, a $1,000 deductible or less. There you go. Another biggie that I think gets overlooked a lot. I try to do a really good job of making sure people understand that we have a zero fee guarantee here. Yeah. But a lot of people will ask. I, I see it all the time on forums where people talk about got hit with hidden fees. Yeah. Or uh, what are hidden fees? So just talk a little bit about maybe those persons not coming here, mm -hmm. but if they are coming here, what does that mean and what do they look for at other places? Versus ours, when you get a buyer's order, some sort of documentation with numbers on it that you can look at and make sure that you're getting the right price that we've disclosed out here, like on this, when you see 55485, you're gonna see that on our buyer's order as a purchase price. There's not gonna be a bunch of fees for dock or prep or anything of that nature uh, because we we've already done it, we take care of it. In, so it's in already bit. in that number. It's, it's already in this number. There, there's no hidden things in there. No, we're not going to add to that number when you come into the finance office. Now, what you might look out for if you're somewhere else uh, and where it's maybe not as transparent is they'll have the sale price, and then underneath they'll have a line item for dealer prep, a thousand dollars, documentation fee, two hundred dollars, those types of things. When you see that and then you see the subtotal isn't exactly what you thought it would be, that's concerning because, you know, hey, I thought I was buying it for this. You guys are doing all this extra work and now you're surcharging me for 16 right. items for $2,000. Well, now the value, man, I should go to Walnut Ridge because now I'm paying, you know, 58 or, or 56 instead of paying the 55. So, so that, that could be, they could be semi-transparent and show some of that information on their sell sheet. We right. don't know because we're not there. But what they really need to watch is when they get back to the financing area with you and they're looking over that and look at that number, that itemization to make sure that matches, That's right? Exactly right? Because from what I'm hearing from you, that could be a couple of thousand dollars right there. It can be. That could I've change your it. monthly payment. That could yeah. do everything. Yeah, I've seen it on different documents. So guys, you know, I've said this over and over and over again. Remember, you have the power. It's you purchasing this item. We are here to help facilitate. you and facilitate that, but ask questions. There's nothing wrong. I, I'm sure you get asked a million questions. A million right? questions every day. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me. It's my pleasure. Guys, if you have more questions than what we covered, or maybe there's something that we didn't cover at all, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to go grab Ryan again and get some either some clarification or some answers to those additional questions. And hey, thanks for watching this week's Tip Tuesday.